What is up all you individuals out there? It's me, full-time anime man. Now, it's been about three weeks since I uploaded, but that's only because I am working on something. It is done, and I want to show you all. A little studio that I worked on for myself to help improve, if you know what I mean. Now, <laughs> went ahead and bought myself a office chair here with a Nebraska blanket on it. Go Big Red. Uh, bought a few acoustic foam panels to put on the walls to help prevent, you know, the sounds from bouncing off the walls and into the mic where I record. It works okay. It does okay. Uh, I got myself a Chrome laptop right here to, so I can work on editing videos for. Got a snowball mic right here. Works like a dream. And that is my Tab 6S where I usually do recordings on. But now I have officially upgraded. And I have a few ac acoustic pans right here because they couldn't fit on any anymore anywhere else. Um, oh yeah, right, I also got some speakers so that I can uh, hear myself better when I'm telling these stories. And like, I'm, I'm sure you're all wondering the same thing. Why are there towels all around the desk? Well, the, the desk is originally made of wood, and whenever I spoke while the mic was on the desk, it would bounce the sound backwards and make the audio sound very echoey. So... And I read on the internet that towels are a good source to absorb sound, so they're good for two things, absorbing water and absorbing sound. <laughs> All right. Can't help but think I'm missing something. Yep, I, I remember now. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Oops. My bad. Let me grab his sword. And there we go. Very nice, very nice. That's a real steel sword right there. I'm going to call him Fred. Yeah, Fred the Rainbow Dragon. It's going to be a nice addition to the family. So, yeah, I basically did all this because, like, yeah, I really wanted to show how serious I am about doing this YouTube business. And I really do hope that someday that I can reach like 10,000 subscribers. It's been a dream that I had ever since I first heard about YouTube, but I didn't really get to get my talent about doing it until I unlocked my voice. But like, yeah, I just wanna say thank you to everyone that still watches my videos and is, who is still waiting for Dino Squad or Warlock or Firewolf, Ice Wolf, all that to just like come to an end to add in something new. I promise you all, we'll get to those sometime later on. I swear on Fred's sword that we will. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this story. This is What If Deku Was Tai Lung's Reincarnation. Hope you all enjoy. Okay, so before we get started with the video, I would just like to remind everybody in case you haven't seen Crimson's part two of the series, I'm going to tell you what he did. Uh, so in part two on Crimson's channel, he um, had Bakugo and Shoto meet at a young age. And he comes to discover that Shen, the peacock, is Todoroki and Kai is Bakugo. So for the past few years, before the age of 14, they have trained together to become stronger and prepare their fight for Shen. But they obviously couldn't do it alone, so now they want to get into Yue to become stronger. Izuku took his mom out for the night, and as their night came to an end, Hasashi mysteriously showed up. And that is where I'm picking it, picking it up at. 
So, hope you all enjoy. Where we last left off, Izuku had met his father for the first time. Izuku was very skeptical at first, but after some time while inside the house, Izuku sat in his bed contemplating on what to say to his absent father. Although, he is glad that his mother's first love interest is back and she can tell him about all the things that he missed out on, Izuku was not very fond on his father at the moment because he, one, he abandoned them. He never called them, never sent him a message, never even sent him a birthday card, or even sent them money to support his family like Inko said that he would. Izuku says, where does he think that he can just walk back into my life? Could it be that he's having financial problems? Is somebody threatening him? Does he know about my ability and my chi and wants to exploit it? Whatever he says, it better be a damn good explanation, or else... His thinking was interrupted by a knock at his bedroom door. Come on in, said Izuku. Hasashi enters. Hey, son. So, you said you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, uh, close the door. He then does that, and he takes a seat at Izuku's desk. So, what's up, buddy? Izuku smiles and says, First off, father, great to see you after not hearing anything from you for my entire life. Hasashi is quiet for a second. Did you really come back here because you missed us? Well, of course I did, son. You and your mother are my world. Why would I? Why would I? Why would I not? Why would you doubt me? It's just a simple question. Izuku then stands up and looks into his father's eyes with his golden eyes. Hasashi feels a little scared of his son, and he says, "Um, son, has your eyes always been like that?" Yes, they have. Though, it's just a little something that came back with me when I was reincarnated. What... What do you mean by reincarnated? I mean, reborn into a new life. You know, soul left my old body and now I'm in this new body. You see, 2,367 years ago, I was one of China's most dangerous warriors in my past life. I destroyed, I hurt people, I killed people. Why was I like that, I'm sure you're wondering? Well, I'll tell you. Izuku starts pasting back and forth while telling his father about the things that he had done in his previous life as the fearsome warrior named Tai Lung. And why he was like that, because he was not given something that he was worked so hard for his life to get and yet, it just all felt like a waste to him. He brings the story to an end by saying, And so, here I am. My sole purpose is to stop the mad demon, Kipaw, and help stabilize the world once more. Hasashi sits there, bewildered of what he just heard. I gotta say, son, that's a lot to take in. So... When you finish off this key paw character, what do you plan on doing? I plan on to change the world for the better, to become a hero, to guard this city and the ones that I love. I will gladly lay down my life if it means a better tomorrow. Izuku looks deeper into his father's eyes and says, But what about you? You say you want to become a hero and earn money to support us. Well, I'll work hard for it, and I'll make my way to the top. Not only will I be the greatest hero of all time, but I want to be the GOAT dad. FYI, that the GOAT is an acronym for greatest of all time. Izuku thinks for a second and says, I have to be honest, I'm not very fond of you coming back here without even contacting us for 14 years. And no call, no birthday present no message. So, you got a long way to go before you are ever considered the goat dad. You're right. It was a huge mistake to leave you and your mother. 
but I promise, son, I'm not going anywhere this time. Hasashi's words touched Izuku a little bit, and he says, All right, fine. You can go, but actually, before you go, let me tell you one more thing. And what would that be? Izuku then raised his index finger, and without even warning, he then poked his father's chest, and a golden aura of light can be seen surfing through his body, and his father freezes with a face of pain. Hasashi couldn't move, but the only thing he can move were his eyes. He looks at Izuku, and Izuku slowly leans in towards his eyes, and he says, Take note of this. If you make my mother cry, or sad, or hurt her again in any way, I will unleash hell upon you. You will feel the wrath of a thousand scrolls that I have worked for many years of my previous life. I still got those skills, Hasashi. And trust me, you do not want me to inflict them upon you. Do we understand each other? The only words that escaped Hasashi's mouth were, uh -huh. Good. Now, hold still. He, Izuku then undid what he did, the nerve attack, poking Hasashi in a few of his body parts, and with a few snap of his bones, he was able to move again. Hasashi gets up, and he speed walks out of his son's room, and on that night, he was forced to sleep on the couch. It's the next day. Izuku was at Shen, I mean Shoto Todoroki's house, doing chi training. While Shoto was only able to conjure his chi up to his hands, he looked over with the thoughts of jealousy, seeing Izuku in a meditative position with his silhouette of Tai Lung right behind him, meditating with him. He stops what he's doing and he walks over to Izuku. Hey, Tai Lung, that's not my name anymore, Todoroki. <sighs> Fine, Midoriya, yes. How are you able to do that? How are you able to make your chi do that, like form it into your past life, and then make it this big? I have to be honest, I really don't know. I remember the night that Ki Pa found me and he hurt my mother, and it just so happens that this happened. When I talked to Ugwe about it, he said that my chi was mostly powered by endearment. Perhaps yours is powered by something different. Todoroki thinks for a second and he brushes it off immediately. Seriously? Your chi was advanced by love? This isn't some sort of shonen anime thing. Things cannot be powered by love. It's either through hard work or determination or even potions. Just what did you drink? It's quiet for a second and Izuku says, Before that was your name, to wait, Todoroki, before that was your name, you were called Shen when you were a peacock. It was anger that consumed you just like me, and it led you down a dangerous path that ended up with your own weapon taking you out. Todoroki clenches his fists out of anger as a flashback ensues. Shut up. Tell me, why is it that you don't use your fireside? Could it be that it reminds you of your past sins and you used it to try and take over China? Todoroki then swings a fist at Izuku while yelling, SHUT UP! But Izuku blocks his fists with his open hand, then looks at Todoroki who is breathing heavily out of anger. D did you notice how my avatar is not moving with me? Todoroki looks at the avatar. 
<laughs> and he's right. The Avatar version of Tai Lung was still in its meditative position. Its hand wasn't up like Izuku was. What? How, how did you do that? That's the thing. I don't know how I did it. Perhaps it could just be the fact that no innocent lives are in danger, or maybe I can control it to not attack. Suddenly, the Tai Lung avatar gets up on its feet, only this time, Izuku isn't moving. It's moving all on its own. Todoroki was stunned and said, How are you this skilled with your chi? It just doesn't make sense. I really don't know what else to say other than I don't know. You see, Todoroki, there are plenty of mysterious things about Chi that we have not unveiled yet. Why am I so advanced at it? I don't know. But I can tell you something is on, but I can tell you this, something is on your mind and it involves your father. Why are you so fit on becoming more stronger than him? Todoroki pauses for a second and he thinks, It's because I don't want to let him down. Ever since I got my memories back, I always reflected on my past life and where I went wrong. Izuku says, Maybe it has something to do with you slaughtering an entire nation of pandas because you couldn't fathom the thought of being bested by someone who was more powerful than you. Todoroki says, oh, come on, you know that that was plot armor. Poe was the main character. Now shut up and let me finish. Izuku pauses and says, wait, did you just break the fourth wall anyway? I always look back when my mom and dad banished me, and it was at that moment that I realized that I failed them. I broke my mother's heart, and I failed my father. I wanted to become, I'm sorry, I wanted to come back to life because I wanted a second chance to become a better son. But at the same time, my father could be a real jerk. He slaps me around and he makes me do training all day. He won't even let me be a kid. Uh, perhaps it's the punishment that I deserve because of my past sins, as you said. I don't know. Izuku had sympathy for Todoroki, and he would share a few words of wisdom with him, which made him feel better. I couldn't think of anything to say about it. But they did bond at that moment, and they would sit down and they would channel their chi with each other. A few days would pass, and Izuku and Bakugo would meet at the dojo for physical training purposes. And as usual, Bakugo is always trying to beat Izuku in fighting, but he always finds himself on his butt. Izuku stands over him, saying, I've won for the fifth time in a row. Uh, just wait, I shall be best you in fighting someday. But how? I've mastered a thousand scrolls of Kung Fu and you have spent a majority of your life vowing revenge. Izuku chuckles for a second and says, huh, it would seem we're not so different after all. Bakugo scoffs and says, you'll see, you just have to wait. While Izuku thinks, a thought came to him and he says, you know, Bakugo, otherwise known as Kai, it just came to me, how did Ki Pa steal your ability to steal Chi? Because it took you years to master it, almost to a point where no one else is able to follow in your footsteps and do it themselves. Bakugo is silent for a few seconds and he says, it's because I gave it to him. Izuku grows angry as he clenches a fist and he says, Why? Why would you do that? Because he promised me that if I shared my ability with him, that we would both reincarnate it together and take the world. 
but I was a fool to believe him. When I realized at the time on how different time works in reincarnation, I realized that he may have been doing this for hundreds of years. And I saw innocent souls being killed. It tears me apart to know that all of this is happening because of me. That's why I came back to life. Because I wanted to fix what I started. Perhaps when this is all over and we manage to take him out, I shall send myself to hell and burn in an eternity of internal flames. Izuku then reaches out to him to help him up and said, you can start by redeeming yourself, getting stronger and beating me in a fight. Bakugo smiles and he gets up and the two would spar slowly, <laughs> or at least Izuku would take it easy on him. A few months would pass and during those months, Hasashi would actually ask Izuku for help in physical training. Izuku would have second thoughts about doing it, but he would go ahead and help his father and teach him a few things in Kung Fu. One day, Izuku was in his bedroom awaiting for the next day of the entrance exams to get into UA. He readies himself by charging up his chi, doing meditation for the rest of the day. But in the middle of the day, he heard a knock at his door. Come in, said Izuku, entered his mother with a present in hand. Hey son, I uh, brought you something. Oh, um, what is it? Here, open it. Inside was a pair of pants, but not just any ordinary pair of pants. These pants were the same design as Tai Lung's attire when he was a snow leopard. They had the leather patterned belt on, on the waist with little itty bitty bits of metal balls on it. And the rest of the pants were made of the same silk. Izuku stares in bewilderment. How, how did you... Inko says, I just did some research on your past life and I decided to make them for you since you used to feel comfortable in, in them while fighting. I thought since you have this new life, you would like to have them. You didn't have a shirt back then, so I just wanted to know if you would like me to make one to go for them. Izuku smiles and thanks his mom and telling her that no, it's fine. It's, it gives him more mobility without a shirt anyway. It's a bit silent for a second as Izuku hugs his mom and Inko says, Listen, son, I don't want you to ever forget who you are or where you came from. You may have been something else in the past life, but as I said before, you're my son now. And it doesn't matter what you do because I will always love you for what you are. That's another reason why I made these so that you don't never forget who you really are and where you come from. Anyway, it's the next day and there will be a few minutes until it was time to go. Izuku and his father Hasashi would be heading out the door with Izuku going to the entrance exams and Hasashi going to a Heroes Corporation to take his hero test to become a licensed hero. Inko says, okay boys, you two do your best out there, okay? 
Izuku nodded his head. Thanks, Mom. Hasashi says, thanks, hon. We'll, we'll be sure that we do do our best. Some sons here has been training me on fighting. Isn't that right, son? He then rubs Izuku's hair, and Izuku looks at him with anger. Like, don't touch me kind of vibe. He then smooches Inko before he leaves, and Izuku rolls his eyes while saying, Oh, brother. As the two men make it to the end of the driveway, Izuku looks at Hasashi and says, All right, Dad. Just remember your training, and you'll be just fine. Thank you, son. I'll be sure to do my best for you and your mother. They walk their separate ways, and Izuku makes it to the entrance exams. As he walks towards the entrance of UA, he was greeted by Todoroki. Hey, Izuku. Oh, hey, Todoroki. And soon, they were accompanied by Bakugo. They walk into the building together, and so Deku doesn't fall in this. <laughs> The three boys take the written exam and they pass with flying colors. After the talk, after that, they talk they talk about destroying the robots and how to add up points and avoiding the zero pointer. Izuku, Bakugo, and Shoto went their separate ways to earn their villain points. Izuku wears the pants that his mom made for him. And they stand outside the gates, ready for the mock exam to begin. While they wait for the challenge to begin, Izuku was doing stretches, of which other people seemed uncomfortable with watching. This caught the attention of a certain delinquent with what appears to be a strength enhancement quirk. He looks at Izuku thinking that this puny boy with only mild muscle build, he probably thinks that he's way more stronger than he is. Hmm, we'll see about that. He then walks towards Izuku. With each step that he took, a small earthquake would ensue underneath everyone. He then stands right behind Izuku, and Izuku says, What can I do for you? The delinquent then says mean things trying to get Izuku mad, but he says nothing and just ignores him. While he continued to do his stretches, he asks, what is your quirk? And Izuku would tell him that he doesn't have one. Almost everyone would start laughing at Izuku for being quirkless. Izuku sighs and says, here we go again. He turns around and faces the bully. He stood over Izuku as the delinquent continues to laugh at him and says, you're going to die if you stay here. How about you just go home and work at your local McDonald's and leave this, leave the hero jobs to the most powerful ones here. The ones that actually have a chance and actually winning. No, said Izuku. What? I'm not going anywhere, except in that direction when that door opens, and there's nothing that you can do about it. Oh, yeah? He then batters his fist back and swings it at Izuku, only for Izuku to dodge and land a nerve attack on the buff delinquent. He then falls to the ground with a face of pain, like, his mouth was open, and I'm pretty sure he made a funny face when it happened. Izuku looks at everyone else who was laughing at him. Does anyone want to say anything else? It's silent. That's what I thought. Suddenly, the doors open, and Izuku rushes in. Someone would, would wonder, why is he running when nobody said go? Their thoughts were interrupted when President Mike said... No one should have to tell you when you need to start fighting. Now go. They all run in. And Izuku comes across a number one robot and destroys it by punching it really hard. 
he runs off and he comes across a two-pointer robot. The two-pointer robot and Izuku would charge at each other, but before they could clash together, Izuku gets a thought. Hmm, this thing most likely has better armor plates than the last robot I just fought. I should definitely use my chi in this matter. Izuku would then jump into the air and causes the right heel of his foot to glow. And then he does a 360 roundhouse kick and kicks the robot in the head, causing its head to fly clean off its body. He would then shake his foot for a few seconds out of pain because even though the chi hardened a part of his that part of his body, it he still felt the impact afterwards. Anyway, he runs off and he comes across the a giant well not a giant, it's way bigger than the one and two pointer robot. This robot resembles Tank. The two look at each other and the three pointer charges at Izuku, but Izuku thinks, Yeah, I should definitely use my chi for this matter. As Izuku charges up his chi, the three pointer robot shoots live ammunition at Izuku. Izuku ducks and dodges the bullets when he reaches the robot. He then kicks its Gatling guns off of it and then conjuring his chi up to his fists. He then raises his fists up in the air and with all his strength, he then ground pounds the three-pointer robot, destroying it, breaking it in half. So basically, he did the Hulk smash on it. This goes on for a while and parts of Izuku's body was getting bruised from hitting the metal with his bare hands. But the bright side of it was that each time that he did it, the pain would grow numb from it indicating that he is getting stronger. The test is almost finished. When the ground starts shaking, everyone looks in the direction of where they're hearing a loud bang from, and the zero-pointer robot arrives and it smashes a building next to it. Everyone starts running except for Izuku, who stares at the robot for a few seconds, wondering if he should fight this thing just for the sake of fighting it. Heck, he wanted to fight it just for fun. But that would be a huge consumption of his chi, and considering the fact that there is no emergency and no one's lives is in danger, he decides that he's going to walk away until he hears a cry for help in the distance. He turns around back at the zero pointer of where the sound was coming from, and Uraraka was stuck under some rubble. With, without even thinking, he ran over to her and the teachers watch, wondering, what is this kid doing? He's about to get himself killed. Should we stop him? Now hold on a second, said All Might. Just look. They see that Izuku starts glowing brighter with his signature lighting, and the outlines of his true form silhouetted with his chi appears right behind him, following his movements. But this time, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger until it was as big as the zero-pointer robot. The students and the teachers were bewildered as the giant leopard-like creature wrestled with the giant zero-pointer robot, pushing it backwards away from the girl. And release, said Izuku. Izuku lets the Tai Lung silhouette hold the robot back while he helps the girl. He then gets the rubble off of her, and he asks her, Are you okay? I, I, I think my leg is twisted, said Uraraka. Izuku then lifts her up and takes her to the main entrance of City A. While his sentient chi, if we may call it that, starts to struggle with the zero-pointer, Izuku senses this, and when he gets the girl to safety, he places her down, and he runs back to his chi and takes control of it. The green-haired boy would then kick and punch the robot, finishing it off by karate chopping its arms off, and then kicking its uh, wheels and destroying its gears so that it could not move. And then he finishes it, he, he finishes it off by reaching right behind the zero pointer's head and then pushing a button powering it off. 
the all the lights on the zero pointer powers down and the head limbs downwards indicating that it has powered off the other contestants are bewildered the teachers are bewildered of what they just saw as they continue to watch, the Tai Lung silhouette then returns to Izuku's body. He stands there for a few seconds and then falls back to the ground as he passes out because that was the first time ever he made his chi that big. But in doing so, there is a drawback. You see, doing that put him in a sort of coma for three days of which he would be asleep. He then wakes up and finds himself in the spirit realm. Looking over, he was greeted by Ugwe with his golden fluorescent light emanating off of his body. O Ugwe, what happened? Ugwe spoke in a worried voice. I am afraid I have bad news to inform you of, Izuku. And what is that? It's about your chi, and how you used it to save that girl. You went over the limit, and in doing so, you shortened your lifespan. You must be careful as to not exert yourself, otherwise it could lead to your potential end. Izuku was bewildered at the moment because he knew that if he ever did that with his chi again, it could potentially lead to his death. Ugwe then said, you must be careful now. I'd hate to see your new life be wasted so soon. Okay, I'll be careful next time. Ugwe smiles, assuring to Izuku that everything will be alright. He even says that he's proud of him for all the hard work and good that he's trying to do to assure safety to the rest of the world. And then he says, good, now you must go. Izuku then wakes up in the real world and finds himself in a hospital with a machine attached to his arm as to keep him hydrated. His body ached badly and his vision was blurry for a few seconds until it straightened out. He looks over to see his parents sleeping in the hospital chairs. After a few hours, Izuku was able to go home, but before he did, the doctors informed him that he may have a physical problem. They tell him that his vital signs were very low and that he needs to be careful because they don't know what's wrong with him. But unfortunately, Izuku knows what's wrong with him, but decides to keep it from his parents. But he would inform Bakugo and Shoto, aka Shen and Kai, about his situation. While Izuku read the letter, he was interrupted by a knock at his bedroom door, and his father entered. He tells him that he was successful in getting a hero license, and will soon be working at Endeavor's agency. He went on to thank his son for all of his help in training him on Kung Fu. At the same time, Izuku was proud of his father, but a bit on the edge, for he will soon be working for Endeavor. After a few days would pass, Izuku would walk to school and he would open the door to see Bakugo arguing with Ida and Izuku would break it up making sure that Bakugo remembered his place. Soon after, Uaraka entered and sees Izuku's green hair and remembers him. Oh, hey, you're the one that saved me. Thank you so much. I don't know if I would have survived. It's no problem, said Izuku. M my name's Ochako Uaraka and I'm Izuku Midoriya. The door opens, revealing Aizawa in his signature yellow sleeping bag. He gets up, wearing all black and long black hair. And he says, If you just came here to make friends, I suggest you just get out. 
I'm Shota Aizawa. I'm your homeroom teacher. Aizawa looks directly at Izuku with a blank stare for a few seconds, and then he grabs his sleeping bag and pulls out some gym uniforms, and then said, put these on and meet me outside. No one questioned their teacher's authorities and do as they were told. In the locker room, while Izuku was getting changed, Kaminari sneaked up from behind him and he said, Ooh, I like your cut, G. And he swings an open hand at the back and, well, tries to hit the back of Izuku's head, but Izuku dodges. And he gets behind Kaminari and with Chi in his palm of his hand, he then slaps him in the back of his head in retaliation. He then, he, Kaminari then face slammed into the lockers that were in front of Izuku and this caused his nose to bleed. He looked at Izuku and Izuku says, hmm, I liked your haircut too. Too bad you have a bald spot now in the shape of my hand. Denki felt the back of his head and he was right, there was a bald spot that he had to live with now. Outside, Aizawa would tell them that he's going to have them do a couple of tests to see how well they are acquainted with their quirks. You there, green-haired boy. What's your furthest softball throw in middle school? Izuku steps forward and says, about a hundred and seven meters, I think. Aizawa continues to stare at the boy with a strange look. He then gives him a ball and says, here, throw this, but use your quirk. I do not have one, said Izuku. Everyone except for Bakugo and Shoto stares at him. Wait, you don't have a quirk? Yes, that is correct. So, how did you do what you did at the mock exams? Uh, that was my chi, my life energy. You see, I am able to weaponize it and fight with it, but I mostly focus on training my physical body and becoming stronger that way. Kirishima says, oh wow, that's very manly. Aizawa thinks to himself, no way, it can't be. He says out loud, then show me. Very well then, said Izuku. Izuku then puts the ball down and engulfs his entire body in his blue chi, bringing a majority of it to his hands. They watch in amazement. Wow, this is so warm, said, or said Uraraka. I'm not sure what it is, but something about this calms the soul of Dark Shadow. Aizawa dumps over towards Izuku. His eyes were glowing, indicating that he's trying to cancel his quirk, but this is not a quirk, as he said before. For some reason, Aizawa backs away and and from Izuku, um, he backs away from Izuku out of fear, excuse me. Izuku, Bakugo, and Shoto take note of this, and the test begins with Izuku using his Tai Lung avatar to throw the ball very far, but Bakugo outdoes his throw with an explosion getting further. In the 10 meter dash, Izuku wins that with ease, and a quick FYI, Izuku, Bakugo, and Shilto are in a hurry to get things over with so that they can have a talk with Aizawa. When it was all over, Aizawa said, Well, you've all seemed to be very well acquainted with your quirks, so I'm going to have to end the classroom today. Class dismissed. Goodbye. Everyone said, Wait, that's it? Aizawa speed walks away as if he's really trying to get away from somebody. Izuku, Bakugo, and Shoto look at each other and then they nod. Aizawa was stopped by Izuku, Bakugo, and Shoto with Izuku saying, Wait, hold up. Strangely enough, Aizawa started running away. Is the boys would then run after him. Uh, he just runs off inside of the building. They split up in hopes to cut him off. Izuku is hot on his tail, 
but then Aizawa throws a few shelves on the ground, trying to slow him down, but it only did ever so little. He turns the corner to the stairs. When he uh, reaches a certain level of the stairs, he exits he exits it, but from the other side of the door, Bakugo and Shoto, who are trying to tackle him to the ground, but they, but Aizawa used his scarf to snare them and cause them to slam their heads into each other. Ow! Just, what the hell is your head made of, Icy Hot? Come on, guys, said Izuku. They continued to chase him. Stop running, yelled, <clears throat> stop running, yelled Bakugo. But he kept running. Izuku said, Shoto, like, can't you, like, cover the ground in ice so that he'll slip and slow him down? Shoto does this, and Aizawa, and he places a few ice, well, he freezes the ground in front of Aizawa, but he maneuvers himself off the wall as if he was a professional ninja. Hmm. And over the... Well, anyway, he gets over the ice. Just, what the hell, said Shoto. They somehow manage to get over the ice themselves, and Aizawa runs down the stairs all the way to the bottom. And to get down there quicker, he decided to jump over the railing and let gravity take him down there faster. When he reaches the bottom, he gets... he When he reaches the bottom, <laughs> he... Um... <sighs> He leaves the staircase. What the heck? Izuku does the same, jumping down there, following him. When he turned the corner, he saw that Aizawa had opened the door to the gymnasium, and he follows him inside. Inside was a rolled-up net that usually that is usually used to define other classrooms who was using one side and the other using the other so that as to not disturb them and also inside was a giant and may I, may I verify a very 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 thick wrestling mat just rolled up with the net that was held by two supports from each side of it Izuku says I just want to ask you some questions. Just stay away from me, said Aizawa. First off, calm down, said Shoto. As, you know, the boys made it in there with Izuku. Izuku sighs and says, <sighs> and he walks to... Izuku then sighs and he walks towards Aizawa, saying, okay, Look, we just want to know if he was interrupted when Aizawa attacked him, hitting him with an open palm, causing him to stumble backwards. Izuku looked back at him with his golden eyes, angry that he did that. Shoto, barricade all the doors with ice. He does this, and, he, and it blocks out all the exits. So Aizawa has no choice but to confront them directly. Izuku gets in a fighting stance, and Aizawa readies himself, and the two would fight. Izuku would throw a few punches and kicks at Aizawa, only for Aizawa to block them and dodge his attack. Bakugo and Shoto watch as Aizawa's fights and his moves look familiar. At some point during their fight, Aizawa got the upper hand at Izuku, and using his scarf, he would then fling him into the air, nearly causing him to hit his head on the ceiling, but he bare, but he was lucky enough to not you know, have that happen. Little did he know that that was his worst mistake, because just as Izuku reaches the top, he then battered his fist back and engulfed it with his chi, and then as gravity pulled him back towards the ground, he then ground pound the ground, causing a sort of waves to form around him that threw 
Aizawa and almost Bakugo and Shoto off balance, which gave him an opening. But whoops, Bakugo and Shoto attacked. The two would try to apprehend him from us trying to escape. And from above where the wrestling mat was, after Izuku did that ground pound attack, it kind of knocked the supports on one side loose. Izuku was getting tired of this and decided to use his Tai Lung avatar and attack. <clears throat> and, at, and in one swoop of his paw, he then causes Aizawa to fly backwards and hitting the tucked in benches, causing the supports to rip loose. Izuku says, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean for it to go that far. Aizawa then gets up with a small limp in his step. He then grins his teeth and his eyes start to glow red. His hair starts waving around as if there was a fan underneath him. But then, the supports on the wrestling mat then swung loose from one side, and then it swung down towards- Smacking him, causing him to fly across the room of the gymnasium and into the gymnasium storage room. I think we killed him, said Bakugo. Shoto then said, no, he's one of the main focuses of the story. He'll be fine. Izuku then said with irritation in his voice, would you stop breaking the fourth wall? Ugh, come on. The boys then ran to the storage room and Aizawa lay there on the ground unconscious with sports balls all around him. When he came in uh, when he came in for landing, his head must have hit the lock on the storage unit for the balls, and that explains why they're all over the place and why he's unconscious. They look over Aizawa's body, looking for a birthmark on his chest, on his arms, on his legs, but they could not find it. Bakugo says... says Bakugo says, damn it, it's not him. Well, if he's not Poe, then oh, just where the hell is he? Why did he even bother fighting us if he didn't have any secrets to hide? I don't know, said Izuku. Wait, hang on. Izuku looks closer at the back of Aizawa's head. Most of his hair was flinged on one side as his head was laying on the other. And he sees it. A little reddish purple mark just on the back of his head. He slowly lifts up his hair, and there it was, revealing a, a panda birthmark. Oh my god, Aizawa is Poe. And that's going to do it for this episode of What If Deku Was Tai Lung's Reincarnation. And need I say, wow, that is crazy. Poe is Aizawa? Man, how do you think... How, why did he disappear? Why can't Ugwe sense him? Why is he a homeroom teacher instead of stopping Kipa? What happened to him? Well, you're going to have to find out next episode of What If Deku Was Tai Lung's Reincarnation. And remember, Crimson the Fiery Lion will be doing part on his channel when he gets done doing it. So, link in the description down below. Go subscribe to his channel, and I will see you all in the next episode. If you made it to the end of this video, consider yourselves hashtag blessed, and I hope you all have a nice day. Goodbye.